I was planning to make a video about different DRTs you can use inside of DaVinci Resolve when I noticed that Open DRT has a huge new update and I think it's absolutely amazing. So I wanted to talk about it today. Let's go through it. First of all, I'll show you how to install it. There'll be a link below. So all you need to do is click on this link here. And this will take you to this website here. Then you wanna click this button here to download the file. Now, once that file is downloaded, what you wanna do is you wanna put it inside your LUT folder inside Resolve. Now, to find your LUT folder, all you need to do is come down to your project settings here and then come across to color management. And in color management, you can come down to open LUT folder and that's gonna show you where you can put that DRT in. So you make a new folder, you can call it DCTLs if you like, doesn't really matter. I have a folder with lots of DCTLs as you can see, but I already have installed, so I'm not put it in all you have to do is paste it inside this LUT folder and then you're good to go now you do have to restart resolve for it to work so after you've done that jump back and resolve and then you can start using it now, normally what we'd use would be a CST to do our ODT. Now, of course you can use this. It's completely fine. There's no reason why you wouldn't want to use this, but a DRT is going to give you some different results when it comes to that. And for me, I think it actually looks better than a CST. How do we use this DRT? Well, it is exactly like an ODT, like I said before. So it needs to be on the last node of your node tree here. So I already have it set it up. Now you can use it in the clip space here, or you can chuck it in the timeline here. But we'll just put in the clip one for now, because we're just gonna talk about this one today. We're not really gonna talk about grading, but this is a fantastic new tool. With our open DRT here at the back, so at the front, obviously we're gonna have our setup for our camera. So we're gonna go from Ari to DaVinci Wide Gamut, and then in our open DRT, this is where the magic starts to happen. Input gamma is gonna be matching the same as the one we've been working in. So obviously, and DaVinci Intermediate. We all know that kind of stuff. That's normal for our ODT, same as an CST. It's a lot of acronyms there. Our open DRT, there is a whole bunch of new stuff going on. Now we don't need to worry about peak luminance. We can leave that as is. We don't need to worry about HDR because we're not working in HDR. Now, if you're a little bit confused about what's going on, you can just hover your mouse button over and it's gonna to explain to you what this tool is doing up here. So we're gonna leave them all the same. Now we're gonna come back to creative white range because that is actually gonna work with one of these down here, which is the creative white, which is really, really interesting. So stick with me here. The really interesting thing about this open DRTs and that I really like is it actually has presets built in. So it has look presets in. By default, obviously it's on default, but we have these other ones here. Actually, let's go through this real quick. So with our clamp here, what is essentially doing is it's clamping anything below zero and anything above one. So we need that on. So you always want to keep that on. It's very, very good to have. Look preset one default. This is basically more of a neutral starting point. So we have a little bit of contrast and let's say a little bit of saturation. So all in all, we're just in a more mid place when it comes to our starting grade. So we're not having too much contrast, we're not having too much saturation. So this is a really nice starting point when it comes to your grading process. But we can go further down and we can look at some really interesting ones. Let's look at colorful here. Colorful obviously we have a lot more saturation in our image and it is a lot brighter so it is giving us a bolder look when it comes to our grading process so this is a really good one if let's say you wanted to do some grading on commercials you know big commercials things like that all those happy kind of stuff that people always want to do now i kind of feel like colorful works really well when it comes to our tone scale preset but when we get to that when we can talk about it i feel like some of these work better in conjunction with some of these let's go down to umbra now umbra is more of a darker more contrasted looking image it's been described by the creator of this amazing DCTL called Jed Smith as a more filmic kind of dark look. So if you want that kind of contrasty, darkish look, it's a little bit warmer also compared to let's say colorful. So it is a darker, warm look when it comes to our DRT here. So it's a really interesting starting point. But again, I feel like it works better when working with one of these ones. Now let's move down to base. Now base is basically no real contrast saturation being added into the clip. What it's doing is that if you were gonna make some creative LUTs or something like that, you would actually use this one to do it. So it's more of a look base kind of setting than it is a creating one. So if you're gonna make some crazy LUTs or LUTs in general, maybe you'd work with this one here. It's 
giving you a more less than a neutral starting point, if that makes any sense, which probably it doesn't, let's be honest. Let's go to the default and let's look at our tone scale presets. So tone scale presets, we have a whole bunch here and they're all slightly different than each other. They kind of work better in conjunction with our look preset. So we have our default one here, obviously. Then we have high contrast. Now high contrast and look preset are actually the exact same. So, which is really interesting. So if you choose high contrast, nothing's gonna happen because that's the default setting when it comes to this DRT. But if we come down, we have low contrast. So obviously we have higher shadows in our image here. We have a more washed out look. Now this one will be good if you're working with a LUT that's quite heavy when it comes to that look. If you're working with a LUT, maybe you've been given a LUT by an director or cinematographer and it's hard for you to work on and they really want to use that a lot and they don't want to use anything else then this would be a one where you could kind of bypass some of that high contrast you're getting from that lot now before we move on to the other ones i just want to show you why i think these tone scale presets work really well with a look preset so for me i think colorful and low contrast have a really nice starting point I think this looks really good when it comes to our image. Now, if we were going to choose another one, let's say high contrast, I think maybe that's a little too much for me. Once I put a lot on this image, maybe it's pushing that image too far, but I find that low contrast, and colorful work really well once you have that LUT applied. Now we're gonna talk about this creative white in a little bit and I'm gonna show you a grayscale. I'm gonna show you exactly what's happening. So make sure to hang around. So we'll go back to default now and we'll just go through the other ones really quick. Aces one, which is a higher contrast. And let's just pay attention from Aces one to Aces two on her skin tone here and on the luminance of this image here. So let's go down to Aces two and have a look. Look at her skin tone with that light compared to Asus one. Obviously we have a much more saturated image here and we have harsher luminance on her face here compared to our Asus 2.0, which is a less contrasty image and obviously lacking saturation compared to the other one. So a less contrasty, less saturated image. Now we have these more fun ones, I would say. We have Marvelous Tonescape, which is giving us a really interesting look. And I really actually like this look. And I would say, I mean, this DRT is free. So go and download it and just play around with what looks you can create. So you could use Marvelous Tonescape and then you could go to Umbra. Maybe that's too much for you or even colorful. You have a nice contrast saturated or base. Now base you probably wouldn't use, but it does work better when using these tone scale presets. So again, back to default. Now let's go to Ariba Tonecore. I oh, 100% pronounced that wrong. This one is less saturated, less contrast. And then we have, these are fantastic names, which again, is it slightly different. Now, again, this one works really well. Again, with colorful, we have a nice saturated image here, not too saturated, not too contrasty, sorry. And then again, back to default. Then we can go to Ari Tone Scale and let's move on to Umbra Tone Scale. Umbra, like the look preset one, is giving a much more saturated, well, sorry, a much more contrasty, darker image. So we're really pushing those highlights down and sort of compacting it all together, I would say. So we've put this one with Umbra. Then we have a very, very contrasty image and very warm and saturated. Maybe a little too much, but if you're working on a project that works for you with this, then by means, go for it. This and colorful looks quite nice. I feel like colorful works better when choosing different tone scale presets. Let's just put this back to the default for now. And let's talk about creative white. Now to do this properly, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you a grayscale. So in this grayscale here, I already have it set up and we can go through it. So we have our DRT here. And what is Creative White actually doing? So Creative White is the white point of our display. So by default, it's set to D65, but the lower the number we get, the warmer our image will become. I'll show you what I mean. So D65, that's our preset. If we come down to D50, we can see our image has warmed up quite a lot. Now to demonstrate what this is doing, I'm gonna take off G and B, so green and blue, and I'm gonna leave it as is, and then I'm gonna change this back to D60. Now this actually hasn't changed, and that's because our red doesn't move, all that is moving is our green and blue. So if we were to change this again, you can see on this waveform, it's actually splitting those green and blues from each other. So the one that splits the most is the blue. And the further we go up, the wider it becomes. By that, I mean, the further we go up to D65, the more together they are. Well, together they are in the end. So if we go down to D50, we're splitting it. So it's basically like a split tone when it comes to that white point. Now, how does Creative White Point work with this? Well, 
if we can do a quick demonstration here, it actually shifts how much of this we want to affect. So all the way down, our creative white point is around here. And then all the way up, you can see that our creative white point is actually starting from down here and working way up and splitting when we're getting up to the top here. So all the way down again, and our creative white point is sitting here and then all the way up, it's really pushing it up and we're splitting it down the bottom. So that means we're hitting the more darker areas, the shadows, and in the brighter areas here. So again, we can just see how that is manipulating our image here. So this is actually really interesting. So what we can do, let's come to this image here. So on my DRT here, I'm gonna press Shift F to get to this nice display. Then let's get a image where she looks really mad. No, we'll go here. We can muck around with this and we can actually create a look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this on, let's say low contrast, because I feel like this image is contrast enough as it is. Then I'm gonna put my creative wire to D50. Then in my creative range, I'm gonna choose how I want this image to look. So if we go all the way down, we're avoiding these darker areas here. But if we go all the way up, we are pushing all that warmth into our darker areas. So we're coming up with the look just by changing that creative white range, which I think is a really interesting thing to fool around with. Now, of course, there is a big caveat when it comes to working with an ODT an open DRT, and that is most likely you're gonna be using it in your timeline here. Now that means every adjustment you make on that open DRT is gonna affect every single image in your grading process. So that means whatever I'm doing to this image here, if it was in the timeline, it's gonna be affecting this image here. So just because something looks really good, let's say with high contrast in, let's say this image here, it might not suit this image here, which is already very contrasty. But that brings me to another point really quick. And that is the really great thing about OpenDRT is, is that this is Rec. 709 footage, right? So it is already very contrasty. Because we're working with this fantastic new OpenDRT, we can actually take some of the contrast out. So when it comes to putting our LUT on, it's not gonna have some crazy look to it. We can go to low contrast. And then I quite like the fact that it should be just a little bit warmer. So now we have this nice warmth to it. We can just fool around. Now, this is looking really good. Then we could put on a LUT. So with that LUT on now, if we were to go back and change this to a more high contrast look, so back in our tone scale preset here, we will go to two high contrast, we're getting too much contrast. So that's the really good thing. We can change this to a lower contrast and our LUT is gonna work better with this already really contrasty image. So one thing that I really, really like about this new DRT is the way it handles skin tones here. So I have two versions here of this image. So one is using a CST and one is using the DRT. So if I wanna show both these versions at once, it's actually really simple. All we need to do is create a new version, of course. So I already have a new version. This is our CST when it comes to those skin tones. And as you can see, they are a lot brighter and a lot less saturated, but I would say a lot less dense. They don't have that fullness to them that the DRT does. So let's go across to our DRT. So this is our DRT. Now, of course, this is all about preference, but for me, I feel like these skin tones are sitting in a really nice place. They look very dense, look healthy. The color looks amazing and the whole image just looks great from a starting point. This is the way that I would want to start my grade from this starting point here. This one here is not bad. There's nothing wrong with it. If you want to grade from this, of course, you can grade from this. But for me, this is a really good starting point. I really like the way that it's rendered the light on this image here in terms of luminance, just everything about this image and this contrast looks so much better than this CST here. Again, it doesn't look bad, but that's just a perfect preference of mine. Now I was gonna make a video about different DRTs. So I'll probably make that with this new one included. I'm just gonna go through we're going to talk about which one I would probably recommend. So from now on, I'm probably just going to use this open DRT when it comes to my color grading, but are you going to use this one? And has this video helped you to decide which one you like? It's a really exciting DCTL. I was just scrolling through YouTube today, came across Cullen's new video and thought I would investigate it a bit more. So I'm going to leave two videos down below. One is from Cullen Kelly's explanation of it. He probably does a better job than me, let's be honest. The other one is from the creator himself, Jed Smith, where he talks about the way to use it. I'm also going to leave a link for the download and a link for the notes. So these are also really important things where you can dive deep into this fantastic DCTL. That is it from me today. I'm sorry, I ranted really quickly. I'm just a bit excited about this open DRT. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think of this DCTL? Is it something you're going to use or you're just going to stick with the ye old color space transform? Anyway, hope you have a fantastic weekend. Thanks again for watching. I've been Drew from Haiti Films.